this is like it's another level. Wow. Grand, very, very grand. It is an eye opener. The cutting of the dresses are planned in detail and are very unique. This is the second largest arc in the world. And it's our third full day here in Paris and this morning we start our day at the Palace of Versailles. Do note that the Palace of Versailles is actually out of Paris City and it is at Zone 4. So if you are coming from Paris City, you have to buy the correct mode of transportation. For us, because our hotel is in Zone 3, we just needed to sit a tram and then a bus to come here. But it's still a one hour ride here. And do pre-book your ticket if you're on the Paris Museum Pass. This entrance fee to the palace is covered and you can pre-book a slot before you come here so you do not need to queue outside. There's also a garden for you to visit but that is not included in the Paris Museum Pass. Yesterday we mentioned that the Louvre Museum, the Napoleon apartment was really grand. This is like maybe two to three levels higher. Yeah. It's another level. Even the sculpture are so special and you can tell that it's at another level. Mm. The different busts are actually made of different materials. That's the first time we have seen like one material is for the head and then they have clothes on them and that's made of different materials. So it's like, yeah, it's a whole new level, super grand. Some even have the accessories. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of time has been spent working on each of the building. The artworks are all really huge. People probably spend one to two years or maybe many years painting it and it's actually one painting out of the many paintings within the rooms yeah it's just a whole new level of royalty and the minimalist me i don't endorse such things <laughs> One of the must visit in the Palace of Versailles is the Hall of Mirrors. Mm. Wow! Grand, very very grand. Yeah, I think can only describe by using the word grand. So if you are visiting Paris, do not miss this place out. This is one of the must visit spots. So the whole area is actually very huge but we didn't really spend a lot of time here. We spent about one to two hours. And you can rent an audio guide or before the visit you can actually download it onto your phone and you can use your phone as the audio guide so there's a lot of options for you if you want to know more about each of the rooms this is currently the rank one grandest most exquisite palace that we have visited if i'm not wrong it is also the top five palace in the world mm. wow yeah and it's really very crowded so we came at opening time at around 9 a.m there's already a crowd each of the room is also very very crowded especially the hall of mirrors <laughs> super crowded do pre-book a slot before you come here if not you will probably have to queue to get in and the queue is really very long but it is totally worth it because it is an eye opener yeah we went to windsor and we thought we saw very grand castle and then we went to the louvre museum yesterday and also very very <laughs> grand but this is mm. and it was built thousands of years ago mm. so now that we are done visiting the palace of versailles we will be heading to our next attraction and we will be going into the paris city again so we will see you at each of the attractions bye bye, bye. it is well known that france is famous for their dessert and macaron is one of them. We did some research and we found out that this shop sells good macaron so we bought one. So usually we don't really like macaron because it is very very sweet. Let's see whether this macaron tastes better than the ordinary macaron. So we bought the pistachio flavor macaron and it is really very different from the ordinary macaron because the cream in the middle is full of pistachio flavor. So for the ordinary macaron, usually the middle layer is like buttery or the creamy taste but this one the whole macaron is full of pistachio flavor i like it i really like it the crust is quite normal but i really like the middle layer pistachio cream and we are now at our next attraction here in paris this is the rodin museum to be honest the only reason why we are here is to see the statue behind us and that is the famous thinker okay that's all <laughs> Because we are kind of in a rush today, we have fully packed our itinerary and so we don't really have much time to explore the full museum. But it does have a nice garden at the back. 
Okay. And yeah, of course, this Tinker statue behind us. According to the creator of the Tinker, Rodin, what makes the Tinker statue famous is that not only his brain is thinking, his lips, his limbs, his eyebrows are also thinking. Maybe you can let us know what is he thinking. Because he has been thinking for uh, quite a few years. Mm. <laughs> and also, you will see the Tinker statue all over the world. This is because there is a cast for this Tinker. So Rodin himself had already made 10 Tinkers. I think in total, there are 20 Tinkers in the world. This is the original one. Do not miss this. Okay, we are rushing to our next attraction of the day and we will see you when we get there. And our very next attraction, which is just a 5 minutes walk away from the Rodin Museum, this is the home of Napoleon. And Napoleon is one of the greatest military general in the world. That's all. That's all. <laughs> The tomb is very similar to the Pantheon. Once you enter this building, you can actually see the tomb at the basement. So the coffin is very thick. According to the description, they mentioned that they have five layers. And each of these layers is made of different material, which is quite interesting. Some of them also believe that the coffin is empty. I think it's a mystery. Yeah, it has five layers, so... Okay, so now that we are done visiting the tomb of Napoleon, we'll be heading to our next attraction and we will see you when we get there. Bye la! Our next attraction here in Paris City is the Dior Gallery. It's not part of the museum pass, but we decided to come here because we still have a little bit of spare time. So what's so special about this gallery? The gallery show the history of Christian Dior and how he started the business and all the different gowns that have been created under Christian Dior brand. You can tell that the cutting of the dresses are planned in detail and are very unique. They even show the workplace of Christian Dior. If you want to come here, you can reserve your ticket. If not, you can be like us. We waited for about 30 minutes before we headed in. If you don't want to wait, pre-book your tickets. But if you pre-book your ticket, you have to abide by the time slot given. We will be heading to our next attraction and we will see you when we get there. Bye! Our next attraction was the Hotel de la Marine. Prior to heading there, we pre-booked our ticket, but it didn't seem like there was a need to, as there wasn't a queue to get in. The Hotel de la Marine was renovated between 2015 and 2021, and it now displays the restored 18th century apartments of Marc Antoine, as well as the salons and chambers later used by the French Navy. While we were there, we were each given a headset to be used as an audio guide. And what was interesting about the headset was that it automatically played the respective explanation track at each of the areas. To be honest, the rooms within the museum paled in comparison to those we had seen, but they were still good. One of the rooms was actually modelled after the Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles. And the loggia is also said to have the most beautiful view of Paris. And for the very last attraction here in Paris, the Triumphum Arc. And apparently you can head up there. Yeah, I didn't know before I came here. So what is so interesting about this Triumphum Arc? This is the second largest arc in the world. The largest one is in North Korea. Cannot visit. Yep. So this is the largest one we can visit. And there is an eternal flame mm -hmm. under the arc. Beside the eternal flame, there is an unknown soldier tomb. So there is a custom that whenever there is a parade, the parade will always avoid the arc. This is to respect the unknown soldiers. This is also covered by the museum pass and yeah, you can head up there and have a good 360 view of Paris City mm -hmm. as well as the uniquely connecting road. There's about 12 of them and they all lead to this triumphant arc. Very nice design. There's one particular section where it is leading to somewhat of an urban city and has a lot of high-rise buildings so it's like the past leading to the future. So it's a very nice view and definitely if you are here and you have the museum pass, just spend 30 minutes climbing up, you get a very nice view of Paris City. Of course, you can see the Eiffel Tower. 
you can actually see the Eiffel Tower almost everywhere. Like at our hotel on the fourth floor, we can also see the Eiffel Tower. So a very iconic attraction here in Paris City. Thanks for joining us in Paris City and tomorrow we will be heading out of Paris to the next town in France and we will see you when we get there. Bye bye! bye, -bye. Go up, very good. And yeah, I really don't know what to say. <laughs>